Hi, I'm Alfred Benjamin, president of the American Heart Association, and we are here to discuss AHA Science News at ESC 2018. I'm here with Dr. Mario Jessup, our chief medical and science officer, and Dr. John Warner, our immediate past president. And they're going to actually discuss five recent trials, beginning with Mario. Great. Well, the first trial that I'd like to speak about is the Mariner or Mariner trial. Um, this really addresses the known complication of venous thromboembolism in sick medical patients after they leave the hospital. Of course, we use thromboembolism protection or prevention with either low dose heparin or other drugs mm -hmm. while patients are in the hospital, but Mariner really addressed in the 45 days after discharge, whether treatment with rivaroxaban compared to placebo changed the outcome of either venothromboembolism that was symptomatic mm -hmm. or venothromboembolism related death. So um, they studied this in a, a large population the rivaroxaban was adjusted according to renal function. And the results showed really no significant impact on the primary endpoint. So rivaroxaban was not better than placebo in this post-hospital discharge study. What I do think is interesting is, is that there was a significant reduction in, in thromboembolism. Um, uh, they quoted as much as 56% reduction in symptomatic phenothromboembolism. And there was even a 27% reduction in symptomatic um, VTE related mortality. However, they, the investigators speculated that perhaps in the patients that were on a lower dose of rivaroxaban because of their renal function, they did not benefit from that. And so there was really no significant difference in the overall group. This would have had a huge impact on how we manage medically sick patients after discharge. And we'll have to see what happens um, to this concept moving on. But overall, it was a negative study. So let me turn to you, John, and you're going to tell us about uh, Milieu, which is from the team group as well. Absolutely. So uh, with the rising rates of obesity throughout the world, and especially in America, there's been a lot of concern about, uh, about treating um, weight loss drugs and the treatment of obesity in, in overweight adults and the cardiovascular uh, risk um, at, at risk population. So today was a very interesting trial that Timmy 61, it's kind of hard for us to think that <laughs> we've all been more I remember Timmy 1, it uh, didn't seem that long ago, but Timmy 61, which was the Camellia trial, which is Lorcaserin um, for the treatment of obesity in patients at high cardiovascular risk. So Lorcaserin is a selected agonist of serotonin. It's, it's approved for weight loss in the, in the U.S. and it's been used uh, internationally as well. And this trial took 12,000 patients all of whom either had cardiovascular disease who are, or were at high cardiovascular risk and randomized them to placebo or 10 milligrams twice a day of lorcaserin. So they were followed for 3.3 years of, uh, of average follow-up and, uh, and the drug worked in terms of losing weight. The patients on lorcaserin uh, lost on average 4.2 kilograms compared to 1.4 kilograms in the patients who were on placebo. And the important thing from a cardiovascular meeting like this was there was no increase in cardiac or vascular events in the treatment arm. So that was an important finding and uh, really suggests that now this is a drug that can be studied further and perhaps even used in patients with advanced cardiovascular risk. So that's an important treatment development and that all of us looking for ways to help our patients lose weight, this could now be a, an, an option for patients. There were a few things that, that though that uh, in general that were kind of interesting that probably deserve some further exploration. Many of you who've treated patients with obesity drugs before will remember that there's always been a concern about valvular heart disease initiated by the drug and pulmonary hypertension. And there were slight increases in the treatment arm of both those findings, primarily aortic valvular disease and patients with uh, 
evidence of by echo of pulmonary hypertension. So these weren't statistically different, and there were small differences. But again, something that will deserve some more study. We all remember the stories um, from the previous drugs that have been on the market for the treatment of, of, of weight loss in cardiovascular patients. So the, a little bit more exploration will need to be done. Another thing that was kind of interesting was just the uh, effect on diabetes, which was actually very encouraging, and that the patients who were on the treatment arm actually had a, a significant uh, decrease in, uh, in the development of type 2 diabetes mellitus while on treatment. 8.5% uh, versus 10.3%. So that's a, a good news story here. Patients are losing weight. They're not as likely to develop diabetes mellitus. And at least in this population of patients over a fairly short period of follow-up, this looks to be a, a drug that can be used safely in patients with cardiovascular disease. And so there's hope for patients who are actually working to lose weight, but still um, there are potential side effects. Mary, let me switch back to you and talk a little bit more about, you know, perhaps low-dose aspirin for prevention and that's your retrial. Right. Can, can you believe there's yet another trial? <laughs> Here we are. Uh, about low-dose aspirin in primary prevention of cardiovascular events. This was done, the ARRIVE trial was done in subjects at moderate levels of cardiovascular risk. Um, and there was no benefit. So... Secondary prevention, absolutely, but in primary prevention in this group, even with moderate cardiovascular risk, there was no difference in the rate of cardiovascular events between the low-dose aspirin and the placebo. Moreover, there was a significant low level of mi minor GI bleeding in the aspirin group although there was no difference in fatal bleeding rates between the aspirin and placebo. But I think it once again tells us that aspirin in our patients should not necessarily be used indiscriminately. Mm -hmm. Patients tend to think of it as a benign drug. Many people start to take it. Um, and I think we have to be really careful about aspirin. Uh, very beneficial in secondary um, uh, benefit, but in primary prevention in, in this trial, it was negative. So, yes, I mean, this continues to underscore um, perhaps some additional trials. That, uh, there may be some negative trials, but John, perhaps you can talk a little bit around with this, the SEND trial. Sure. So adding to the aspirin <laughs> events of the day, uh, or... Uh, was, it, was the, the presentation of the ASCEND trial data, which is an interesting trial of just over 15,000 patients with diabetes mellitus, but without known cardiovascular disease, treated with 100 milligrams of aspirin in the first section of this study we'll talk about versus placebo, followed for about seven and, and a half years of follow-up and, and surveyed for cardiovascular events. So this, uh, again, it yielded more questions probably than answers. Um, the, the study itself showed that there was actually a significant reduction in the risk of serious vascular events, 8.5% um, versus 9.6% in patients receiving the aspirin. But that was almost entirely offset by a risk of major bleeding, which was 4.1% uh, in the aspirin-treated patients versus the placebo group. So 12% 12 12, 12 uh, decrease in vascular events offset by a risk of major bleeding, an increase of 29% in the patients who were aspirin treated. So again, there will be more work to be done with this data to really understand who benefited, perhaps digging into the, the risk of bleeding in this population of patients. But for now, it doesn't look like that, you know, primary prevention with aspirin is, has the uh, safety profile that would allow us to use it more broadly in patients, all diabetics, particularly those without uh, cardiovascular disease treated in this problem. You know, it's interesting, you know, that you're, what I'm hearing you say is that there's not a free ride with aspirin. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So perhaps you may want, John, to stay along those lines and tell us about omega-3 fatty acids. And just... Well, and what was a fairly negative trial kind of morning, and the, the second piece <laughs> of this was the, the, the omega-3 fatty acid treatment of the same population of patients, diabetic patients without cardiovascular disease. So that was the other arm of the ASCEND study, and that was, uh, again, placebo versus treatment with omega-3 fatty acids, and it didn't show any benefit in terms of cardiovascular prevention of cardiovascular events. So uh, again, it's another piece of data in an evolving story with the omega-3 fatty acids. 
we've become much more comfortable talking about them in the secondary prevention, but there's really not as much data in a large in these larger primary prevention trials. But at least for this popular population of patients, both with diabetes without vascular disease, it doesn't look like there's any benefit at this moment in using the drugs routinely. You know, what I would say is that every trial actually sets up the test by hypothesis. And oftentimes, uh, people think that they have the answer to their question rather than actually doing the trial. And that's the purpose of a clinical trial. What it really says is that as we think about evidence-based medicine, what's the evidence that, for example, taking aspirin or even omega-3 in a particular setting? And so I think that it's, it's a benefit particularly for our, the, the space we all occupy, which is to be able to provide the evidence for or against what we do for patients. And even though it was a negative trial, negative outcome uh, trial day, negative trials are important too, because it teaches us what not to give or what, what possible uh, new approach is not going to work. So it, it's all giving us data. Well said. And these trials were all very well done and really generated a lot of very interesting information that I think will stimulate some further study in these very important areas that were discussed today. Well, I want to thank both Mariel and John for joining us here on the AHA Science News at ESC. And until the next time, this is Ivor Benjamin signing off.